English by Eliza Beerman and it goes a little bit something like this Once upon a time there lived a tailor's son named Joseph He worked beside his father in a little shop stitching clothes for the wealthy folks in town. As he grew older, Joseph began to dream of making something special for himself. He pictured a warm coat made of warm clothes. For many years, he saved up the few coins that he got from helping his father. And one day, Finally, had enough to buy the cloth that he wanted. So Joseph went to the market and bought the piece of cloth he had been dreaming of. It was a warm grey with bits of gold and silver and even a little crimson here and there. That night, while his father slept, Joseph He laid out the pieces of fabric and made a careful plan. He measured, he cut, he stitched. And after several nights of working, the young man made himself a fine coat. When the tailor saw the work that his son had done, he felt very proud. He said, You are a tailor now. You have done very fine work. Joseph loved his coat. It was warm and was colourful and everyone looked at it. He wore it everywhere. One afternoon, when Joseph was buying cloth in the market again, a cold rain had begun to fall. He saw a young woman shivering only a thin shawl. She was about his age. Joseph took off his warm coat and offered to let her wear it. He walked with her. He walked her home. They came to know one another and within two years of that day, Joseph and Anna got married. Joseph made his own little tailor shop in the basement of their small apartment. He continued to wear his coat. He wore it and he wore it until he had worn it out. One day, he held his coat up, turning it around, and spoke to Anna in a sad voice. This old coat has meant so much to me. It was my first dream come true. It made my father proud. It helped me to meet you. And now there is nothing left. Nothing. Nothing. As he looked at it, he thought, and then he laughed out loud. 
actually there is something left. There is just enough. And instead of throwing the gold in the rag bin, he took it to his workbench and he measured and he cut and he stitched. By the next morning he made a jacket. He loved that jacket. He wore it everywhere. His wife gave birth to twin girls. When they were a year old, he looked outside one night and saw that the first snowflakes were falling. Come on, girls, he said, picking them up and tugging one into each side of his jacket, buttoning them in. Let's go taste the first snowflakes of winter. And the girls laughed. As the big flakes melted on their noses and on their tongues. And Joseph danced around and around holding his two darlings under his warm jacket. He wore that jacket for years. He wore it and he wore it. Until one day, it too was all worn out. He held the jacket up and said, Oh jacket. You've meant so much to me. I'll never be able to forget how I danced with my twins in the first snow. But now, there's nothing left. Nothing. But again he stopped and said, Actually, there is. There is just enough. And it stood and threw Camp with a small brim and a lining that kept his head warm in the winter. He loved the camp, he wore it everywhere. When his girls grew to be thirteen years old, there was a famine in the land. The crops were poor, and the rich were not buying any new clothes. So the tailor's family had very little to eat. Mostly potatoes, cabbage, or a carrot or two. One day, they went into the forest at the edge of the town. And they collected firewood. When all of a sudden, Anna began shouting. Come, come here, see, look at all the berries. Berries. Lots of berries. The family gathered around the berries. Still more, Anna said, if only we had something to carry them in, I would make a pie. Well, what did they have to carry them in? Joseph's cap, of course. So the cap was filled to brim with beautiful berries. The purple juice left a permanent stain. But the taste of the berry pie was worth it. Joseph continued to wear his hat for years, until one day he looked at it, and he realized it was all worn out. He said, Old Cap, you've meant so much to me, but now there is nothing left, nothing. But then he stopped. Actually, there is, there is just enough. When his first grandson was old enough to speak, he sat on Joseph's lap and played with his bow tie. Grandpapa, you have a butterfly on your shirt, the boy cried. One day, when Joseph's hair was grey, he came home from the market and took off his coat. Where 
ashes your bow tie, Anna asked him. Indeed, he felt for it. But it was gone. Oh dear, it must have fallen off. He jumped up and retraced his steps through the whole marketplace. He went back to every shop. Everyone knew of his bow tie, but no one had seen it. It was not until late in that night that he finally came home and went to bed without his supper. The next day, he refused to get up. What is the use of this? he said. That one cloth that I loved is gone. And now I have nothing left, truly nothing. I've been through so much with that cloth. Joseph did not hear him and his wife put on a shawl and went off to her daughter's house. Bring your children, she said. The entire family came and plopped down on Joseph's bed. I can't play today, said Joseph. I am too sad. I have lost my poor tie. I have lost all my so dear memories. Well, tell us about the cloth, Dad. Your grandchildren do not know all of the stories. Oh, but it is too sad. Please, Grandpapa, the children begged. All right, I will, he said. He told them about making the coat and making his father proud. He told them about meeting Anna. He told them about dancing in the snow with his young babies. He told them about the cap full of berries. And as he recalled all of these memories, his tears began to fall slowly down his cheeks. He told them about wearing the bow tie to his daughter's weddings and the births of his grandchildren. His eldest grandchild said, You made your bow tie into a butterfly, Grandpapa. Maybe the butterfly flew away. Oh, Joseph sighed. Yes. Yes, it seems that my beloved bow tie did fly away. And today you have helped me to see that the memories I have that are so dear to me did not fly away. There were just enough memories left to make a story. And the story will never be lost if you help me keep it. He hugged his family close and got out of bed. And now his story has passed down through many generations. And today I give you this story as a gift to pass on further the story of just enough there is always